What's up everybody? How's it going? Sorry for the big beard, I just haven't got the time to shave. I've been quite lazy uh, these days and I'm very focused on what I'm doing here at the repair shop. So, today I'm going to explain to you guys a little bit how a laptop motherboard works. Just a regular laptop, not a MacBook. They are quite similar in some things, but in, in others they are very uh, different. And I think it's quite interesting to, to actually show you guys this, because I'm pretty sure everyone's used to seeing MacBooks and not these regular pieces of shrink So, this board came from another shop from another state. The customer brought it there, the guy tried to fix it, he wasn't able to do it, and he said that this board cannot be fixed. Well, it turns out it was fixable, I managed to do it, and I'm going to explain to you guys how I did it today. Alright, so let's get to it. Alrighty, here we have the board. Uh, as you can see, this is a Sony board. It says it on right here. This is from a Sony Vio. I think it's an SF15. Don't quite remember it right now. The thing is, you look at this thing and you go like, Jesus Christ, what, what, what is all this? For me, this is all like witchcraft, right? Well, this is what I thought before I actually learned how to do board repair. In normal laptops, you know, not MacBooks, the architecture, let's say, of these boards are pretty much the same thing. Uh, at least for these older ones, you know, without USB-C charging. I could be wrong though. Well, let's start by the beginning, of course. This part right here. This part is where your charger gets connected. Once your charger is connected, 19 volts from the charger goes to this MOSFET right here. Let's see if I can get a little close up. There we go. 19 volts goes to this little MOSFET here. In some boards, there are two MOSFETs, but in case of Sony Vios and other brands, there's only one. In this case, this is a P-channel MOSFET. And once we have 19 volts, in a source, the gate must be lower than 19 volts, so the board can get 19 volts, and those 19 volts get transformed into 3.3 and 5 volts. Kind of like MacBook Pros. 19 volts is the V plus ray or B plus. If you really want to call it, you can call it the PP plus G3 hot, but that's not what we call it here. That's only in MacBooks. Here we call it the B plus or just 19 volts plus. But what if there's a short on V plus? Well, this board has a little shunt resistor right here. This shunt resistor gets monitored by uh, the charging IC, which I think is this guy right here. And if by some reason there's a short on 19 volts plus, the voltage on the gate will be the same as the voltage on the source here. What that'll do is 19 volts will not go through and the entire board will not be powered. That's how a protection circuit works on these regular laptops. All right, cool. Let's say we have 19 volts. We need 3.3 and we need 5 volts. In this board, there is a little TPS IC here. This IC in combination with the Super I.O., which is this guy here. The starter chip or the EC chip or Super I.O. is the guy that sends the enable signals to the primary uh, PWM, as we call it. And these guys are, are usually a, a double. What I mean by that is they, they generate 3.3 and they generate 5 volts. And for this IC to work, we need power and we need the enable pins. In this case, there was no power going into the chip. I'm going to put this board in a microscope to show you guys what I mean and why that happened. All right, now that we are in the microscope, I'm gonna show you what was wrong with this board to begin with. Uh, I'm gonna put some pictures on screen too, just so you guys can see, but this resistor was completely off. And if you take a look, I have replaced this uh, MOSFET here too. This MOSFET is for powering the CPU right here. And it was a completely wrong type of MOSFET too. This was th this was the MOSFET that was in it. As you can see, it's like scratch on top. It wasn't even soldered correctly. So if you recall, Lewis says to work in brain off mode, right? I didn't even open a schematic for this one. I saw that this looked bad and this looked crooked. I reflow those, you know, and, and replace the MOSFET. Okay, so then I took a look at the primary PWM chip which is this guy here is a TPS something I don't know and when I look to its left I'm gonna put the picture here so you guys can see but that's how it looked there was a huge short between these two guys here and you know what I said that we need power to the chip and the enable signals well see this thing here this is the power for the chip this is the V plus uh, rail and this is just ground and I have no freaking clue what the other tech did. I, I, I need to replace this capacitor, by the way. It doesn't look good, as you can see here. But the other tech did is he just put a blob of solder here and call it a day. I took this capacitor off and I saw that there was no pad underneath it. So I scraped both pads. You know, this is where uh, 19 volts comes comes in. And this is ground. So I scraped this. I scraped that. Soldered the capacitor like crooked. 
and run a jumper wire here. And then the chip got power again, got its 19 volts. Once I did that, I checked for 3.3 and 5 volts and they worked again. They uh, It's an always present rail. An always present rail means that when you plug in the charger, these rails should appear when the computer is off. So 3.3 volts and 5 volts. It, it depends on the model of the laptop. Some, some laptops only 3 volts get, uh, are present, but in this case 3.3 and 5 volts were present. So now I'm going to do some measurements for you guys to actually show you that the fucking thing is fixed. Okay, so here we have my little multimeter. It's in DC mode. Uh, let's put our black probe on ground and our red probe on the 3.3 volt rail. As you can see, I mean, we did have 3.3. Hmm. This board is trolling me. Wait a second. I think it's not really a... Uh, an always on rail. But as you can see, I pressed on the power button there. We got fan spin. Here we have 3.3. And here we have 5 volts. Nice. Let's check out our V core. 0.8 volts. Good. I don't know what rail this is. I think this is graphics core. It only comes up when there's a screen. And this is for the memory. 1.5. Alright everybody. That's gonna be pretty much it for this video. I'm really sorry for not fixing this guy on camera. But once I opened up the laptop and I saw all that nightmare. Uh, I really wanted to take my time with this board. So once it was fixed. I at least recorded a little bit of the process for you guys. Okay. I really hope you guys enjoy the video. And until next time. Thank you for watching. Bye now.